Good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the NASDAQ 100 being recorded on Sunday, March the 24th, 2024. I'm going to start here with the NDX, the cash market, and I don't have a lot of adjustments that I've made, but now that I believe that I have in line basically the cash market and the futures market, an agreement I am just going to basically be updating the picture. Now, I want to add, of course, uh, some cycle work. And that <clears throat> most of that applies, if not all of it actually right now, applies to the NDX. So the NDX, similar to the S&P 500, and if you're listening, they basically are running in the same cyclic uh, form. And both are really kind of flashing that a correction is imminent. And it should be not huge, but enough to kind of put a little dent in the current rally. Now, my thought is that here in the cash market, if it could be, it might just be a way four. And that would just put a very small dent in. But if the market manages to put in a small four, go back up, put in the five and finish it, then it could be the first beginning stages of the primary C wave down. So let me get started here. And uh, I can give a break point uh, for the NDX that would start to throw a more negative pall over the market in terms of uh, how much additional upside we have left. Now, so I'm continu continuing to count this as uh, a cycle fourth wave that began off of the 2022, in the case of the NDX, I believe it was 2021, late 2021 uh, highs. And the cycle wave four will consist of a primary degree A wave, B wave, and C wave. So we've done with the A. I believe we are in the finishing stages of a primary B wave counter trend rally. And within that counter trend rally, we have completed intermediate waves A and B out of the required three waves. So it would be an A, a B, and a C on an intermediate degree. We're inside intermediate wave C, and that will consist of five waves of minor degree, of which we've completed one, two, three, and four. So we're again in that final minor fifth wave, which will then complete intermediate wave C, which will then complete primary wave C. What will be inside of minor wave five? five waves of minute degree. Now, interestingly enough, minor wave five is forming a diagonal triangle. So all waves, one, two, three, four, and five will all be three wave uh, structures. Now, I believe that it's a little bit of an expanding, at least in the futures market, it still has that expanding nature. So let me now drop down so you can see there was the the A, primary A, we're in the primary B. Uh, we still have, in terms of the irregular B, which is what it is because it exceeded quite a while ago, that high at, at, at 16,764, which was reached in late 2021. And so we've been above that. We've also surpassed the 1.236. So what we have left is the 1.382. And I believe that the market will at least reach it, if not exceed it. Uh, because as you can see, leaving the A and the B in place where I've had them, uh, the C wave would be equal to the A wave at 19,550, we'll call it. And so there's still plenty of up room, uh, up, upside left or upside potential left. And actually the cycles also support continued upside. Now, what the NASDAQ, the cash market, would need to do is to actually start to break down below 17,765. That would start to put a, a negative condition on a cycle basis for the NASDAQ. 
And that would actually start to give some confirmation that a correction and likely a larger correction, even though this is a counter trend rally, the overall move being a cycle wave for correction, that the correction down would pick up again. And that would start to give some stronger support to upside being complete. So that number again, 17,765 basis, the cash market. So let's start to go down and we can take a look at where we are. So I'm going to bring it down to a four hour chart right away. And we can see we have one, two, three, four. And I may, I, I know I've made some adjustments here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five for minor wave three, a nice ABC for minor four. And then again, these were small, but still they were clean. We did five up for one, we did three down for two, and then got that nice extension within minor wave three. So what puts us in minor wave five right now, and we have um, minute one and minute two. So I'm gonna bring it down, take a look at the hourly chart. Oop, gotta go out to the 30 day. No, I gotta leave it out in a four hour. So so much time is passing that I need to open it up from here so we can see. This actually was an, a zigzag, which means it was a five, three, five. Now I know some could probably say, well, that's a one, two, three, four, five, uh, but it does count in my view cleaner as a, B, C, wave one, giving us that diagonal uh, to finish this move. And that actually, in my view, is very appropriate for this particular wave, uh, this B wave, which has been dynamic and nonstop to the upside, uh, totally uh, giving a convincing argument that it's just up, up and away and putting more credence actually to my alternate, which would suggest that it is a finishing move up, but of a larger degree and likely would still have much more to go. So, I have numbers that could take us above 19,000. I have fibs that take us up to 20,000, but I'm not actually revealing them just yet because um, I'm actually not really looking for it. I do have some breakpoints um, that I'll likely present soon, uh, but I want to see how this plays out right now before I jump over and, and put up a different count. So I'm continuing to work what I have. Now, inside this, minor wave five, we have minute one, minute two. And then the third wave is truly just, is it's putting in three for wave A, three for wave B. And now we're working the five waves up to put in the C wave. Because remember, all C waves must be five waves. Now, wave C could actually be a five, three, five. Um, but we should still be able to get five waves overall. And that is where we're at. So if I had to count within this, then I have one, two, three, four. Now, there might be just a little bit. I could do one, two, and then one, two, three, four within the third. We come up to finish these internal third wave and then come down again in a fourth and then go up one more time in, in the uh, the finishing move to finish the minute third wave. So what we can give some estimates, at, and it's not necessarily the most accurate, um, but I would have to wait for wave four to do this. But we can use another one that, that gets used often. Uh, in the triangle pattern, it's going to come out a little bit different. And that is just connecting one and two to give us an idea of where wave three shall come in. So you can see that wave three is actually still up there at 18,782. And that is if wave three would be 1.618 times the length of wave A, which actually in a triangle does not fit. So I removed that, but it is a fib that some people may have on. Right now, I'm looking for that it should come up and touch our trend line, and as we continue to move out, we have 18,683 and, and then up to 18,700, depending on how far out 
time-wise we get as this continues to rise. Now, just moving this out, wave three has already broken above wave one, and that's, that is what would be required. And we continue to hit new all-time highs as we continue to move up on this scale, as you can see. And the market continues to really rally at about a 45 degree angle. And that's both the S&P and the NASDAQ. And that is what is so impressive about all this. And it actually is what continues to trouble many people about in terms of considering that this is a B wave. Now, there are many other aspects that do fit. And even when, if you remember, at least it was in the S&P, uh, that the uh, Zweig, a breath thrust indicator got triggered twice last year, got triggered twice. But those readings, so in other words, it's like the outcome, because it has 100% accuracy actually still, was that within six to 12 months after being triggered, the markets would be between 15 and 20% higher. And right now, the S&P is like 24% higher than that level when they were triggered. And the NASDAQ equal. So that's already been completed. And, and that really tossed a, a things around when it, when it occurred as to what actually are we forming here? Are we still part of a much larger bull market that actually the ABC that we got down into October of 2022 could have been the completion point for, for a cycle wave four, could have been a completion point for a primary wave four if we adjust all that count and in the, in the NASDAQ, that count would be coming from 2000. From 2000 on up, we'd have to recount all of that to figure that what completed in 2021, late 2021 in the NASDAQ, would have been a primary third wave. And then this would have been primary four in October of 2022. I'm actually revealing my alternate. And then what we're in is a primary fifth wave up. And what's in primary wave five, five waves of intermediate degree. So if that being the case, where I have problem folks on that is right here. The kickoff, the start of it, it's a very strange one, but it could have been a, it could have been a diagonal up to there, a, a wave one diagonal. So it's a beginning diagonal. And then we get a wave two, and then we're in the third. But you can see that it, it's it's got a lot more to go under that count. And not that it's impossible, because it isn't. That's why we call it an alternate, because it, it will. But we're not at a point where I actually think it could kick in. And all right, I'll go over it now. Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but I opened my mouth. And if I go out to my monthly here, and what I'm looking at is having to go here. And then this all has to be, if that's primary one and two, this all has to be primary three. And unfortunately, I have a really hard time pushing this third up to that level and, and calling this intermediate three. Actually, those now don't fit anymore because I somehow took them out. And so it's one, two, three, four, five is here on the intermediate degree for primary wave three, and this being primary wave four. Yes, it was quick and yes, it was sudden. So if necessary, if I had to, and I have trouble doing it, but I would do it again and again until I could figure if it if it would work, that the uh, intermediate wave three would be here, intermediate wave four would be here, Primary wave three would sit up at the top. So this all doesn't happen yet. And then we have primary wave four, where I have marked A. Now that's the uh, intermediate, excuse me. That's the alternate, the first alternate that I have. So again, that would put this as uh, intermediate wave one, or this is intermediate one, intermediate two and that's minor one, minor two, we're in a minor third. And so you can see how it, it really doesn't fit. It does not fit as cleanly, unless I can go one, two, and then somehow is this the three, the four, and we're in the minor fifth wave up to complete, you know, these would be intermediate degree, 
and we're in intermediate wave five to complete then again that high for primary primary wave five and then stick the three on top of all of that up here now so and basically i've got to be honest with you basically a lot of the same fibs that i'm using are interchangeable it's just that it, it would it drives it up closer to twenty thousand versus nineteen thousand five hundred. So, if necessary, I, I likely am going to put it together and and put it out. But again, there are certain problematic points that I have uh, in attempting to do that right now. I'd really have to go back and pick it apart and 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 look very closely as the possibilities. And without just kind of going, okay, well, this is one, this is two. I need to go in and figure it at working all the way up from uh, 2003. So that's where that stands. Okay, so leaving it as is, uh, bringing it back down to the hourly chart here. So now we're inside this third wave. And this was a very complex, but these were, you. if you remember, I've discussed it. If you follow me daily, I've discussed it. It's all threes, three, 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 and now we're working the five. So finally, it got some shape to it. And we have a one and the two, and then an A of three, a B of three, and then a one, two, three, or almost complete, and then a four. And now either we're going to come back down where this is a three and this is A, B, C, and of with this internal third, right? Because I can go one, two, three. We come down in a four and then back up to complete wave three and then come back down in a larger four and then go back up to complete the minute wave three. So that all remains alive. And we I just don't know yet because we have to let the market let us know. But the, but the possibilities are there. And then again, that other number, 17,765, here we are, coming right down here. We get into that gap, 765, right there. So breaking this low, basically, starts to really turn that we might be done. Now, that may happen still, but I think if we go up and finish this whole move, and then get that, it's going to put more emphasis on, oh, we're done. So upside would be complete. So that level remains important, not only on a cyclical basis, but just on an Elliott basis for putting in some support for the whole rally being complete. So again, what I'm looking for right now is a completion of wave three, minute wave three, and then for the market to come back down in, in minute wave four. And remember, I'm not, I'm not going to be looking for it to move outside of uh, the trend lines. It might come down quickly and then bounce back up. But it should be a substantial. So if we're going to be up around 18,700, then a move back down to 18,000, let's say, in a fourth wave is, is a 700-point move. So... Indeed, it will be worth, if you're at least a day trader, definitely worth selling it and or playing in it. Even if you're a swing trader, it's going to be worth trading it. And if you're an option trader, it's going to be definitely worth trading it if you know what position you want to put on and take advantage of that downside. But the understanding would be it's not the larger move. It's not this larger beginning of a uh, primary C wave, let's say. So we're just still, we get done with three, we're going to come down in a four. Very well worth trading in the that direction. But it's not, don't keep those shorts forever because I would consider it a fourth wave. But if we go up, we come back down slightly and then go back up, then it's going to be likely as we do the three internally, come back down in a four, not to go surpass this likely. And then we go back up to complete the three. So there's a couple of scenarios on to when this larger, once we're done with minute wave three, when the minute fourth wave will begin. So bear that in mind. This is all basis the cash market right now. 
<clears throat> let's go over and look at the future, which of course has a little bit different spin because it trades uh, all night. So, you know, we have Globex all included in this thing as well. So here, um, same deal. Everything remains the same. Coming into this move, everything remains the same. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, minor wave four, and that we're in the minor fifth wave. I also believe it's coming into here. I can see a little bit more of an expanding. Actually, no, it's actually taking out a little bit more of a contracting. Okay, that could work too. So, but still, um, ABC, 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 A, ABC, B. And here we came down and smacked that lower one. We're in the cash market. We did not. And then one, two, three, four. So I have it a little bit cleaner where I'm thinking that we did finish the small internal fourth wave within this third, the, the C wave of the minute wave three. And that being the case, I put my fibs in. Now, this first one, I think it just may provide some resistance. It does provide for a new high, but we need to get above that. And we would, right? That is 18,682. So up here where it's making a new high, which is why I'm leaving it. So we could get up there. If it fails, again, we'd have to put in five waves. But what I'm looking for, see how nice and neat it is at 18,871. So we kind of come out and that's where we come. We complete minute wave three. And then we drop in that fourth wave. And that's really the part I want to catch either via options. And I, and, you know, I have some ideas for put spreads. I have some, you know, and you can do it in the queues or you can do it in, in, I, I don't necessarily trade NQ options. They exist. Uh, but the queues, you know, they're very, very active. You can do it in the T queues. I kind of stay away from the SQs myself because they're just so, so beat up. And so uh, the move should still be very, if you trade the SQs as that ETF, there's still, there would be plenty of money to make. But I think option-wise, your better choice would be the TQs. And again, it's all put spreads. So now how we want to do this, but I'm looking for the possibility that we come up we finish this third wave. So in other words, we we don't actually continue to go down. So I really wouldn't be looking, although possible. This could be A, this could be B. We get a little bit of a C wave, maybe comes down. I But look at this. I do not want it to go cross over this first wave at 18,380. And that actually is 18,381. Because then it's four is overlapping wave one. Big no-no. And this is not a triangle. It's within a triangle, but this particular wave pattern is not a triangle. So I don't allow the four. This four, yes, for sure. I it, I expect it to come down and overlap wave one, minute wave one. So the minute four, I do expect it. The internal um, sub minuet wave four, I do not. Look for it to break sub minuet wave one. So I'm kind of hoping that that's it. And we just start to rally starting in Globex today. And we rally on up. This might provide some resistance, but I'm looking for it to go all the way back up to the top and then begin that minute fourth wave. And that could be tomorrow or it could be Tuesday or it could be, you know, pushing up further into the week. Now, quick review of our moving averages. And one thing, I think I mentioned this the other day, but if not, I'm putting it up today, that I have now taken down, I always had the five, which I always called the four, but I actually was a five period, and the eight period. I've taken them down because on my longer term charts, they aren't as efficient as if using them on, on a two minute, a five minute type of a chart. But on, on a one hour, on the daily, on the four hour, I, I don't necessarily use them. But what I, I have done is I've combined them. And, you know, the five and the eight, and now we use the 13. And that seems to be pretty accurate in terms of the cycle work and also on how the market kind of trades above and below it and keeps me in line with we are in a triangle because it sits right kind of in the middle. And it, it seems to be pretty accurate. It's like it stays below. You can get a little bit of sales. And once it breaks above, you get a nice move. 
and then now it's kind of hanging on just above it. So if it breaks, then I maybe think get a quick little drop. I'm hoping it doesn't overlap because I'd hate to think that we're we're in some type of an extended third here, it's a weird pattern. So I'm hoping this stays above and we get up there and finish this thing. And then as it comes back down, it would give a good signal that it is in that little bit larger fourth wave. All right, so are we moving it out? I could take a look at the same things on the daily. Um, so we're gonna look here and we can see that we are still in alignment to go up, uh, but again, same deal. I'd be looking for it to continue up, get us up here up towards that 77, I think it was, and and then put in the minute four. And then I would expect it to probably come down and equal it because these are less reactive, being that it's a daily, but they are in alignment to continue to go up right now. So the market remains in a more bullish posture. Building to possibly putting in that bigger one, but we're still bullish. And even after that uh, minute wave four, the market would still be in a position to be to be more bullish. So consider. And so let me go back over just to kind of put this back into perspective. We're going to leave it up here on this one, put that there so we can see. And that's what I'm looking for here. Now, just to quickly go over what we should be expecting next week in terms of of uh, economic reports. On Monday, we just have new home sales, and then we have a couple of Fed presidents and a Fed governor out speaking. And so we're all just going to continue to speak as we work our way through uh, what the Fed wants to do. Tuesday, we have durable goods, S&P, Case-Shiller, Home Price Index, and Consumer Confidence. Those all are between 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, we have those. Uh, Wednesday, nothing but one Fed governor speaking. On Thursday, Thursday, we get initial jobless claims, GDP, the second revision. Uh, from the fourth quarter, by the way, the second revision, uh, Chicago Business Barometer, it's a PMI. And then we have pending home sales and consumer sentiment. Those all 8.30 to 10 a.m. at various times. On Friday, that's going to be the big day. We have advanced U.S. trade balance. We have retail inventories, wholesale inventories, personal income and, and spending, and the PCE index, which, of course, is exactly what the Fed uses uh, in a large degree as one of their major uh, indicators for what they believe is happening. And one more time, the PCE index is now forecast to, again, uh, the core to drop, but the overall index to rise. And core to core PCE year over year, to actually remain the same and the overall index year over year to rise. So that's going to put up and that. So again, if I'm looking for this thing to top out and start to come down, Friday might be the day. Um, but, and I'm going to leave it at that because actually we, you know, who knows the market tends to just do what the market wants to do. And sometimes you're like, wow, that kind of shows that inflation's still engaged and blah, blah, blah. But Hey, they don't care. Boom. They do what they want to do. All right. I am going to complete it here. Uh, again, if something totally bizarre happens in the globex session, I likely will attempt to make uh, another update. Otherwise, the next Elliott Wave update will be on Monday, March the 25th. 